Hey everybody, Chris Avalon here. Coming to bring you a little news. Um, I just finished my radio show less than, well, about an hour and some change ago. But there were some topics that was left over. If you want to hear what I was talking about, basically it was a lot of stuff. It was an action pack show. AllDigitalRadio.com is still there. Or you can download it on iTunes. Look up Chris Avalon show. It should be there for you to listen to with the music and all the other stuff included. But one of the main, there was some stuff that was just too juicy. I couldn't pass over. I just wanted to come and talk about it now. So, um, next year, Pose is going to be re coming back with its second season. So I had found out some inside information in regards to what's going to happen with the second season of Pose. So, um, while the first season started off in 1987 and ended in 1988, because, you know, throughout the eight episodes, it kind of just went really quick in regards of, like, you know, summertime, and then all of a sudden it was, like, Christmas and then Valentine's Day and all this other stuff. But anyway, so now word on the street is that um, the new season is going to take place in 1989 and end in 1990. So, at the Television Critics Association press tour yesterday, co-creator Ryan Murphy revealed a rough outline of where season two was heading. Um, while the show's initial outing, as we said, ended in 1988, he has said that his sophomore season will begin in 1989 and go through all sorts of the end of March of 1990 when Madonna's Vogue was released. All of a sudden, I mean, and we should also mention, well, Vogue came out in March 27th, 1990, and... Um, you know, it was heavily inspired by the ballroom scene, which some people say that she pretty much ripped off, whatever. I don't think it's ripping off um, a scene when you actually hire members of the scene to dance in your um, music video. Stealing would be the next topic I'm going to get into, which is Azealia Banks jumping down um, Beyonce's to accuse of her stealing choreography. I got that topic coming up next, but... Um, <clears throat> I didn't see it as stealing. I saw it as paying homage. And a lot of times when you pay homage to a certain group or a certain demographic, what you do is you incorporate different styles and those influences and you hire those people to basically perform as part of that situation or as part of that whole demographic. So when you hire members of the House of Ninja and Extravaganza and stuff to dance in the background, that's basically paying homage to the people. You hire the people that know how to do that dance instead of having them come in to train your dancers how to vote. Saves time and money. So, basically what he was saying was that um, Madonna has been nice enough to give a number of her tracks to the show in season one. Y'all remember they played Sidewalk Talk, which she actually sings background on. I think, I don't remember who produced that. Was it Chef Pettibone or Jelly Bean Benitez? It's either one of those two. I don't know if Jelly Bean was her boyfriend at the time. But, um... Yeah, so basically what we were saying was that I think the thing about the show is we haven't tried to do too many of my typical stunt casting, and I don't think we will, but I always like to talk to Madonna. I don't know how she'd feel about playing 1990s Madonna. I would say, let's talk to producer Janet Mock about that. I was thinking, you know what? Because Madonna looks way older, and you're trying to get Madonna to come back and play Madonna. Why not hire Lourdes to play her mother? She looks so much like her mother when she was younger. Why not get her daughter to play her mother? Kind of like I said, y'all need to get Quincy to play I'll Be Sure. But um, if well, when y'all come back for the second season, so if y'all don't want to do stunt casting, it would be kind of great to see Madonna on the show. But I don't know. I'm just thinking in regards of the timeline and how people looked in those days. You don't want to have someone who's, you know, 2018, 60-year-old Madonna playing... 20-something Madonna in 1990, or however old she was. I think she was in her 30s by that time. Because, um, I believe, like, 98... Yeah, but I believe, like, by 98, when, um... What was it? Um, she was in her... I believe she was in her late 30s by the time Ray of Light came out, and that was, like, in the late 90s. But anyway, looking forward to season two. Excited about it. Looking forward to seeing where they're gonna go. Heard they're gonna be coming more into, like, doing more... I hope they kind of get more political and stuff and, like, act up and all that other stuff. So that's what I'm really excited about. Um, also heard that Billy Porter's gonna be on American Horror Story Apocalypse, so that's gonna be great to see him doing other Ryan Murphy, um, shows. So I'm really excited about seeing him on that. Um, Beyonce now being accused by Azealia Banks of stealing choreography. 
Um, I'm just at a point now where I'm just like really over Azalea Banks and all the dumb shit that she's always got to say. Like every other day, she's got to beef with somebody. And it's kind of like what Shea kool said when she was on um, an episode of Hey Queen Beach House, the recent one that just came on last week. If you um, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. She was um, doing an interview. Um, I truly believe that Azalea Banks' inner saboteur is definitely taking her over. She really needs to, like, not get so caught up in her head with her inner saboteur and always accusing people of stealing things or doing uh, things that she's not a proud Like, last week, she was mad at um, Nicki Minaj for collaborating with Takashi 6 9 Now she's pissed at Beyonce. But here's what she said. Because she took the Instagram, and this was yesterday. So she accused her of stealing choreography from her friend. She says that um, she also, we don't need no more thought moments from Beyonce. So now she's a hoe. So she says, I realized that my ex-dancer Ashanti choreographed for Beyonce and stole the original choreography Jip Jack made for Count Contessa. Beyonce needs to get over herself and just hire me because even though Coachella was cute, it was still more of the same. Now, I love the HBCU stuff. I like the, um, you know, the, the marching band and the live band and, and that whole New Orleans flavor and all other stuff. But then they came, I will agree with her on that, that there came a certain point during the Coachella performance or Baychella, as you want to call it, that it did feel a little bit one and the same with what we're, we've come to expect from a Beyonce concert. And all the kids were turning it out yesterday because the On the Run tour was in New York, made a pit stop in New York yesterday. So I know a, quite a few people that I'm um, that I know very well that I'm friends with. Um, friend Albert, another friend, um, were at the Beyonce concert yesterday because I saw y'all Instagrams and stuff. So, and I'm glad y'all were having fun. <clears throat> so she also said something or another like. Well, she actually said like, and I was going to say like, like twice. But she says, like, Beyonce loves to push this female empowerment shit, but it's always trying to steal from talented women and outdo them, but she really never does. It always looks like Giselle doing her best. Oh, she called about her middle name. Tried it. Um, it always looks like Giselle doing her best Beyonce impersonation. I really hope she gets real with herself soon and humbles herself enough to accept the visions and full projects women who admire her put together for her. Like, we don't need no, any more Beyonce thought moments. No one needs Beyonce doing OOTDs. I don't even know what the hell that is, but if y'all know what that is, let me know. Like, she's some up-and-coming fashion toast bitch. It's like, what's next? Beyonce Fashion Nova collaboration? And if that's what she wants to do, let her do it. I have no clue what she want, um, why she wants to be a regular bitch. It makes me sad. Now, my thing is, why are you so fixated on what other people are doing? Focus on your own shit. Stop always focusing on what Beyonce's doing and what this one over here is doing and this one collaborate with somebody you don't necessarily like or whatever the case is and do your own thing. Stop always trying to copy and do or or not copy but just getting mad at other people's ideas and accomplishments. What this one's doing has nothing to do with you. If they're not stealing from you, I was like, what was that? Cause I, okay, anyway. Um, if it has nothing to do with you, then don't worry about it. Don't focus on that. Now you're saying it's your friend. Your friend ain't got a mouth of their own that they can't um, defend themselves. You're focusing on what these people are doing. Focus on releasing your new album, EP, mixtape, whatever you want to fucking call it, with the mermaids, the fantasy two, whatever you're calling it, and leave it at that. Stop hating. Put all that energy into your music. That's all. I like the music. I think you're talented. But you focus too much on worrying about other people and what they're doing. If this girl stole from your friend and got the proof, sue her. I'm sure she'll pay you under the table or whatever it is, how they do, when they try to remove themselves from these situations. But it is what it is. I don't know. I may need to watch. I need to see these two and compare the two and see um, what um, is going on or what the situation is. Um, darling, you're on camera in your underwear, by the way. In a mask. Mm -mm. You about to scare the children. <laughs> anyway, so um, last but certainly not least, there is... I talked about this before, but I wasn't able to get the video to, to upload correctly, so I'm going to do it again. So, apparently we're a year away. I don't know exactly when it's coming out. But the um, list of all the names of the people who are going to appear on All Stars 4 have been leaked. And I will say this. Reddit got it correct. 
when it comes to talking about RuPaul's Drag Race and All Stars and who's going to appear on the show. Because I know for a fact this is actual confirmation. And how they found out is because um, how they put two and two together. And I don't know why VH1 and everybody and World 1 and everybody, all of y'all are getting mad about this. But I feel like y'all not doing a clever enough job trying to keep it secret in regards of who's going to be not, who's, who's on the show, who's not appearing on the show. The kids from DragCon or whoever or Reddit, they're getting clever and they're figuring out ways to... Um, Figure out who's on the show. And I don't pay attention to all the Reddit shit because I try to, I, I want it to be spoiler free and I want to be able to go in with a clear mind and not know who's doing what, but and it, too many people spoil them. But anyway, so um, how people were finding out was because they were saying that a lot of these usual performers, the people who perform a lot, like a lot of the drag queens who are getting a lot of gigs apparently aren't showing up to gigs. They're canceling gigs, they're disappearing, and now. Um, people are figuring out that, okay, these bitches are on Drag Race. Because All Stars 4 is currently filming. And right now, the season 11 girls are in L.A. shooting promo for the season that's going to be coming probably later this year or early next year. I don't know when the seasons of All Stars and Well, most, most likely... Well, I don't... Yeah, I don't know when All Stars is airing. And I don't know when season 11 is airing. But from what I do know is that Word on the Street is... Miss Vanjie is coming back to season 11. She's going to come back like Shangela did when she got kicked off first. And then she came back the following season and people was pissed. Because I think Shangela... Wasn't Shangela... I think she was on season 2. And then she came back for season 3 and went further in season 3. I think she was like... Um, I'm trying to remember... I don't remember which place. If y'all remember which place, write it in the comments. But, um... So, Yeah. So now they're bringing Miss Vanjie back because, she, you know, she's such a popular character. But the word on the street is, is that while we all love her now, she is going to take more of a villain approach when she returns for season 11. And the villain approach is more than likely going to be her unfiltered and not giving a fuck. So she's probably going to be saying a lot of things and coming at the girls in some sort of way and causing drama. I'm not talking about vixen-sized drama, but just more of a villain role. And I like Vixen, by the way. I'm just saying. But, um, so yeah. So I'm hoping that with her coming on and being more outs outspoken and more unfiltered, that it won't cause the fans to turn on her. Because right now, a lot of people love Miss Vanjie because she left such an impression during season 10 of being the first one eliminated. And that, that phrase, Miss Vanjie, Van like her doing that pretty much made people really like her and adore her because they don't. But the thing is, we haven't really seen her compete. So it'd be good to see how she does when she's on season 11. Allegedly. Just to say that. <coughs> okay. So, so far, the names of people who are on the new season of Drag Race All-Stars 4 is season 3 alum and All-Stars 1 alum, Manila Luzon. Also, season four alum and All Stars one alum, Latrice Royale. Now, I know a lot of people are like, why is Manila and Latrice coming back? It makes sense that they would come back because the first All Stars that they were on, it was team challenges and team eliminations. So the season went by pretty quick and a lot of the girls who were on the show were unfairly eliminated based off of doing a whole team thing. So I didn't particularly like that idea. I feel like if you're going to do All Stars, let them do things on an... On an on their own individual merit, that should be the only reason why they're getting eliminated. And from word on the street is that the producers are trying to cook up drama and all this other stuff because the girls are trying to be too nice and too diplomatic. So there might be a lot of... So if a lot of drama and stuff is going on in the show, it could be with the editing. It could be a whole lot of other stuff, which they've been doing. Also, who's on the show is Gia Gunn, who, word on the street I heard is that RuPaul is none too pleased that there is a trans woman competing on Drag Race, but I feel like you need to humble and be all within the Zen situation, especially with all the drama that transpired with people coming at her for being like, well, you don't want trans women on the show and this and the other. And I know like we have things where, and I know from a very reliable source, I'm not gonna tell you who, but that was saying that they're not too happy, that the, the vibe is that Rue, you know, is playing it up lovely but is not happy that these producers pulled this stunt and had Gia on the show to compete. So she's the only trans woman that we know of so far, um, unless any one of the other contestants plan on coming out midway. So yeah, Gia's on the show. Rue's not too happy about it, um, based off the vibe. 
Um, we'll see how it all plays out when the season starts. Jasmine Masters is also on the show. Naomi Smalls from season eight is on the show. Farrah Moan from season nine is on the show because, and how they're finding out is because they're not, um, when you disappear from your social media, when you have no gigs lined up and you're canceling gigs, people start to put two and two together and realize that, okay, um, there's something going on. Um, yeah, that there's 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 something going on, and the fact that I'm trying to get rid of this damn. I hate when when you know messages and stuff pop up on my damn phone, or whatever. I'll just leave it. Um. So yeah, when you start canceling gigs and all this other stuff, this is how people figure out um, that okay, this bitch is on the show. So then also Valentina is back, so I know the children are gonna be excited that Valentina's on the show, season nine. She'll be able to redeem herself, and we'll see which Valentina shows up to perform. Um, Trinity Taylor from season 9, also Monique Hart from season 10, and Monet Exchange from season 10. So there are your top queens that from, from past seasons who will be competing. Kind of wish Angina was, um, was there. It's unfortunate that, um, she's not. But it is what it is. Also, I was hearing that they're trying to come out with a Facts of Life, um, um, what is it? A Facts of Life reboot. They've been rebooting a lot of shows. Like, I'm hearing they're trying to reboot Alf, Living Single, Martin, Married with Children. Now we got Facts of Life. And it's like, no. I really feel like, why are we rebooting all these shows that nobody wants and nobody's asking for? Like, I'm not feeling the fact that we need these all these reboots. Like, I get that, you know what, creativity is being stifled right now because of who's in the White House or whatever the case is. But, um... I would like to see reboots of, of other things. Like, there's shows who definitely, we definitely need a reboot of. Like, New Year Undercover. I want a New Year Undercover reboot. I want, um, I would love a Queer as Folk reboot. Or maybe even a Noah's Ark reboot. I would love uh, a Six Million Dollar Man and a Bionic Woman reboot. Like, I want reboots of stuff that people will actually watch. I don't know anybody that's going to be wanting to watch um, an ALF reboot, like, really? Like, that was good for the 80s. Like, now, especially when it had E.T. and Mac and me were, like, the things that we were all about in those days were a boy and his, and his creature and the Goonies and all that other stuff. That was, like, the time for that. I don't see that era kind of coming back. I mean, I get with Stranger Things, but that's just a different energy with that. So, I don't see, like, all these... Like, a living single I'd be kind of interested in. But Facts of Life, like, how would that work? Like, would you bring new people on? Or, at this point, that's two shows that are being rebooted that Kim Fields was on. You got a living single and you got the Facts of Life. So, if that, they do bring those back, who's going to be starting it? And I heard that the people behind producing um, this reboot is for the Facts of Life, surprisingly, is not George Clooney. It's Leonardo DiCaprio and Jessica Biel. I don't see how that's working. Like, I like Jessica Biel working and executive producing that other show that she has on USA. Um, forgot the name of it. And just that quick. And I know somebody who actually produces The Sinner. That I can see her doing. But a Facts of Life reboot? Like, you're reaching. But it is what it is. So, um, yeah. I think that's all that I have to say about all of this. But, yeah. So... Love you all for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I know I've just been all over. There's been a lot of distractions and stuff going on. So I was just trying to concentrate really hard as I put together this video. So forgive me if I'm like jarbling and all over the place. Definitely leave your comments about any of the topics that you heard of. Um, I'm excited to see RuPaul's Drag Race and all the drama play out on that show. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to... Okay, I'm, I'm done with Azealia Banks and all her messiness and all this other stuff. I really want her to focus on the music and less on the drama. It's just, yeah. And I'm also excited that we're getting a trick sequel. If you have never seen that movie, it's awesome. It's with J.P. Peacock, who played um, Mark, the stripper, the go-go boy. And then you had Gabriel, who was played by... Um, Christian Campbell, Nev Campbell's brother, and it's about a boy who goes on the train and something happens and he's on his way home and he falls in love with this go-go dancer who he sits across from on the train and he's cruising him and then trouble ensues and Tori Spelling was in it. It was a cute movie. I loved it. And Miss Coco Peru, they're making a sequel. I'm excited. It's going to take place in L.A. Cannot wait to see this movie. I definitely love that film. The 90s was a great time for really good indie movies, especially when it came to queer content and comedies and that sort of thing so kind of miss those times and i kind of wish we could bring it back but anyway thank you all for watching 
Um, definitely follow me on my feeds, which would be Instagram at Chris Avalon Blog, Twitter at Chris Avalon NYC. Look me up on Facebook and add me. Also, if you like these videos and want to see a whole lot more, if you have any ideas on what you want me to um, talk about, definitely subscribe to my YouTube page and click the notification bell so you know whenever I release a video. Love you all for watching. Ciao, darlings.